Welcome. Uh, glad that you are joining us for our video podcast. Now, if you're someone who wants the full service, who wants welcome and announcements, wants prayers, wants music, you want to go back to the YouTube page and click on the link that says full service. For those of you that are like, listen, I just kind of want the message. This is the place for you. A chance for us to learn more about how do we live our life with Jesus in the midst of all of life. And so we're glad that you are joining us. If you want to find out more information, go to our website and check it out and click on whatever links most interest you. We're so glad that you're joining us. We look forward to continuing to connect with you and engage with you. If you have questions, if, if you have suggestions, if you have things you'd like to ask us about, the best person to connect with is Leah. She is the one who would love to connect with you online in a way to help you grow in your faith wherever you are at. Well, thanks for joining us. Let's jump into this week's teaching. Welcome. Uh, this week we're continuing in our series called Navigating Life, Making Good Decisions. Now, I'm sure you're like me. We, we recognize that in life we make many decisions. We make choices. Some we think about, others we just kind of go to naturally, but we understand the significance of the decisions that we make, the consequences that they play out in life, both the good and the bad. And so the question isn't rather, are you making decisions, but rather, how do you make good decisions? And so this summer, we are continuing just to walk down this path of looking at, at how do we make good decisions in the midst of all of life? And we want to get real practical. We want to get real specific. So today, we're going to talk about the importance of self-control. I know, I know, I know. Self-control is like one of those grown words, right? It's like, it's like the idea of like, I understand the importance. I, I understand why it's needed. But come on, like really, is that where we're going to go? Well, today, I, I want to look at how self-control can actually be an incredible benefit how it's almost like a gift that God gives to us in the midst of all of life. I want to look specifically at, at, at how it starts to play out in the midst of our lives. And so as we continue, we just want to jump back into this one particular passage in the Bible. It's found in the Old Testament, the, the book of Proverbs. Now, Proverbs, for, for some, if you're familiar with it, might just seem more like ancient tweets or little sound bites here and there. But what you start to see as you dive in a little bit deeper is how Proverbs, who's primarily written by King Solomon, one of the wisest person to ever live thousands of years ago, actually starts to blend it together. And you start to see these incredible threads, these incredible train of thought that actually echo throughout the entire pages of the Bible. So today, when we think about navigating life, when we think about making good decisions, let's talk a little bit about self-control and, and how it's more than just self-help, how it's, how it's more than just, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, but, but how it becomes a reality in the midst of all of life. So let's jump into Proverbs and I'm just going to read a couple verses. Um, I think you're going to love it and, and just start to unpack these two powerful images that Solomon gives to us. So let's jump in and see what Proverbs has to say. This is what Solomon says to us. He says, do you like honey? Don't eat too much or it will make you sick. Don't visit your neighbors too often or you will wear out your welcome. It's not good to eat too much honey. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Just a, just a little sampling here today, but, but we start to see that throughout Proverbs and actually throughout the Bible, the importance of self-control. The Apostle Paul, one of the great leaders of the early church, one who's inspired by God to write much of what we have in the New Testament, when he's speaking to a, a group of first century Christians, he, he talks about the, the fruit of the Spirit, the, 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 the evidence of God at work in your life. And, and some of the obvious ones are there, like joy and peace and, and love. And you're like, yeah, 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 if God's a part of my life, then, then of course that is going to be evidence. That's going to be some of the fruit that my life will display. But then he ends it with self-control. Have you ever considered that for a moment? That, that the more you follow Jesus, that, that, that the more the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, that, that self-control begins to become a part 
of who you are. So let's let's unpack that a little bit to help us understand that that self-control shouldn't be a grown word, but but rather is a gift that God gives to us to really focus upon and to value that which is most important. Solomon presents two images that that I think are incredibly helpful for us to to understand and unpack. One is of a wall, and the other one seems a little bit odd, honey. We're going to get to honey in a moment because that is actually a bit of a game changer when it comes to self-control. But this is what Solomon says. He says, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Now, for us, we, we can start to understand the importance of walls. But, but in Solomon's day, in, in, in ancient days, walls were what guarded the city. They, they were invaluable. They were so important that, that no one would develop a city or build a city without first building a wall. Why? Because a wall protects what is most valuable to them. That, that to build a city without a wall would would be ridiculous. It it would be careless. I mean, there would be raiding nations that would come and if they saw a city without a wall, they're like licking their chops. This is no problem. It it would protect you from, from wild animals. People in Solomon's day understood the importance of walls. Like for us, in, in our houses, in our, in our homes, we, we put up fences, but it's not so much for protection as it is for privacy. When I lived in Malawi for four years, everybody, pretty much everyone, had a wall around their property. It, it wasn't a question of should I build a wall, but, but rather you did. And it wasn't just for privacy, it was for incredible protection. One of my responsibilities when I was in Malawi was overseeing volunteers. And volunteers would come sometimes for weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years. And I would check in on them, make sure they're doing okay. I remember one particular occasion, this woman from the UK came over. And I brought her to where she would be staying. And like everyone else, she had a wall around her house. And she turns to me and says, like, this is going to be a problem. And I'm like, I, what, what's the problem? She's like, well, I didn't come here to live behind a wall. And I'm normally not so blunt in my conversation, but I said to her, well, I guess you're getting on the next flight back to the UK because I'm not going to allow you to become vulnerable to what could potentially happen to you. You see, Solomon is reminding us of the reality of of walls, that they guard, they protect. There's, There's a sense of intentionality to protect that which is most important and valuable to you. Have you ever thought of self-control in that way? You see, so often we think of self-control as the things I can't have. But what if you started to look at it through the lens of Scripture? That self-control is a means of protecting that which is most important. And as you think about walls, you realize that self-control is not built overnight but it's something that you put in place intentionally to help you down the road make good decisions. Perhaps you've experienced this in your life, or or maybe you've seen it in the lives of others, that because of a lack of self-control, like one choice, one decision, where you get caught up in the emotions or the circumstances of that moment, you literally flush so much down the drain. We, we see it so often. Some of the most successful, some of the most credentialed and accomplished people in this world seemingly had it all, yet they lost it in a moment. Why? Because they failed to build these walls, failed, failed to see the importance of developing self-control. And so what about you? How do you begin to view self-control? Do you, do you view it as a grown word or do you start to see it as a thing that God is, is urging us towards as a means of protecting what is most important to us? But there's more to it than that. You may be sitting there thinking, well, wait a second, wait a second, Joel, this, this just sort of sounds like maybe the, the Christian version of self-help. Like, like, how does this play in in terms of what, what Jesus wants for us and, and, and how we live it out as well? This is where the honey comes in to play. When, when, when Solomon says, listen, if you, if you find honey, in, enjoy it, but, but just a little bit because too much and it'll make you sick. 
This is a subtlety. You see, I think a lot of times when, when we think about self-control, we think about preventing the temptations and, and the bad things in this world for getting its hooks on us. We, we start to think, yeah, I need, I need to have self-control when it comes to anger or when it comes to greed or when it comes to lust or, or when it comes to temptations. Yeah, like I need more of that in the midst of life. But Solomon is asking us to go a little bit deeper. Because I believe oftentimes what can become most dangerous in life is when we allow the good things in life to become the ultimate. Let me explain. Jesus, one of his best invitations that he gives to people is like, listen, I have come so that you may have the abundant life, the life worth living. It's an invitation to find your ultimate hope, to find your identity. To, to find your satisfaction, not in the things of this world, not even in the good things of this world, but to find it ultimately in him. But what trips us up so much is too often we attempt to find ultimate meaning, ultimate identity in the things of this world, in the good things of this world. And Solomon, thousands of years earlier, is, is reminding us of the importance of self-control. Not, not just to prevent the, the bad things from, from ruining our life, but from not allowing the good things to truly begin to take over. You see, we're all unique. We're all wired in different ways. And so I, I, I can't sit here and say, well, you need a wall around this area in your life. You see, maybe for some, you're... Your, your wall of self-control needs to be around words of affirmation or around success or around finances or around uh, accomplishments or adventures or, or church involvement or relationships. You see, anything that is good, that is actually given to us by God, yet we begin to make the ultimate. You see, honey is a placeholder for the good things in this world that when used too much can cause problems. Solomon puts it this way, listen, you, if you find honey, it, use just a little too much and it'll make you sick. Isn't that true about many things in this world? That if we ultimately chase success or we ultimately chase accomplishments or we ultimately chase financial wealth, that too much of it and we'll start to go down the wrong path. You know, to quote the maybe questionable theologian, Mick Jagger, I try and I try and I try, but I can't get no satisfaction. It, it really speaks to the reality of, of pursuing the good things in life in a way that will not ultimately cause troubles. Because here's the reality. Our appetites, what we feed, will grow. Those of you who know me, my, my go-to snack is nachos. Give me tortilla chips, give me salsa, give me, give me cheese, give me jalapenos, give me hot sauce. Do not, do not give me lettuce. Peep, listen, listen, no judgment here, but you put lettuce on nachos, that is a crime against, that's just a crime against what you're doing. Bit of an aside. So, but, but what I learned is whatever you feed will grow. When I went away to Malawi, I knew that there's going to be not a lot of nachos available. So I devised this plan. I am going to indulge in nachos at such a rapid pace that I'll no longer want them anymore. And so for like six weeks before I left, I was busting out nachos like two times a day. We're talking lunch. We're talking after dinner snack. We're talking midnight. Like I just, I just went for it. And you know what happened? My appetite actually increased. I actually wanted them even more. And this is the subtlety. This is sometimes the danger around the good things in life is that we pursue them and we get a little bit. So we pursue it more and we pursue it more and we pursue it more. And there never is any satisfaction in the midst of it. So often what Jesus says when it comes to the abundant life, when it comes to truly following him, it's found in him. It's, it's recognizing and it's enjoying the, the good things in life, but it's understanding that these do not become our ultimate 
priority. So what about you? Do you start to see how God wants us to lean into self-control? How self-control becomes one of the fruit of the Spirit? Not as a grown word. Not, not to prevent us from enjoying the good things in life. But so that we will not make them the ultimate. That, that they will not become the thing that ultimately only He can provide. Jesus offers us this invitation of the abundant life. But one of the ways that we experience this abundant life is in recognizing that Jesus is our ultimate. You see, you see, walls, self-control, protect that which is most valuable to us. And so we put them in place. I believe the best decision I've ever made the best decision you can ever make is in making Jesus the ultimate in your life. But it's a decision that, that has to continue to be played out day by day, which means that if Jesus becomes the ultimate, then, then we begin to build these walls. We, we, we begin to understand the importance of self-control so that we don't only allow the bad things to train wreck our life, but that we don't allow the good things to become the ultimate. So let's get, let's get practical. What, what does this start to look like? Well, if using my life as an example, when it comes to my relationship with Jesus, I understand that, that there are important things that need to be put into place. I'm sure you've heard on the news and you hear it over and over and over again, this, this reality of, of, of sexual abuse within the church, of, of, of clergy and ministers doing things that are completely inappropriate, are just, are just completely harmful and hurtful. Listen, I don't know a single minister who goes into the ministry saying, I want to abuse my power to take advantage of others. So how does it happen? By failing to build walls. By, by, by failing to recognize the importance of self-control, by recognizing the importance of keeping Jesus as your priority. And so I've taken measures over the years of, of not putting myself in places that could not only jeopardize and ruin other people's lives, but could jeopardize and ruin the ministry of the church, could, could jeopardize and, 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 and ruin my relationship with God. You see, walls are not built overnight, and we are naive to think that we can just make the right decision in the moment. Jesus knows this too well, and that's why he says, start to build these walls, develop self-control. Another area of temptation for me is that if I truly want to keep Jesus as my ultimate, it means that I don't play to the drum of the praise of others. Listen, listen, I'm, I'm a people pleaser. I love words of affirmation. And one of the dangers for me is that I can begin to put myself in places and to function and to minister in a way that I just want to hear an attaboy over and over and over again. And even though I'm engaged in ministry and doing things for God, I'm not making Jesus the ultimate. So there's different kind of walls, different areas of self-control that I throw into my life. One more recently is with regards to social media. Listen, social media can be great, but it can also be incredibly difficult, particularly when it comes to the area of comparison. I, I can see other churches. I can see other ministers. I can see the great or the bad that they're doing. And suddenly that becomes the, the level, that becomes the measure for me. And so I'm not saying you have to do this, but one of the things that I start doing for about four or five months now is I've kind of just eliminated social media from my life. Yes, I still check in on the church stuff and the Malawi stuff, but personally, I just stopped the scroll because I don't want my life to be defined by comparison in terms of what type of a minister or what type of church we are in comparison to everyone else. When it comes to life, Jesus says, I want to offer you the abundant life. Make me the ultimate focus. And so are you practically doing it? As we think of the words of Solomon, He's like a person who, who lacks self-control is like a city without walls. Have you made the decision 
to start to put measures in place so that you can ultimately live that abundant life with Jesus? I would suggest take some time this week to begin to think through what do you value most? And then to begin to ask yourself the question, what walls, what areas of self-control do I need to start to implement today? So when I find myself in a difficult place, I know the next step I need to take. The Apostle Paul says, listen, one of the evidence of God at work in our life is the display of self-control. These, these attributes that, that, that we live by day by day. So today, as you look at your life, what do you need to build to protect what is most valuable to you? Your relationship with God, your relationship with others. Let's pray together. Lord God, we are grateful for this day. We're grateful for some of the simple reminders that you give to us in life. Just the reminder again of the importance of self-control. Lord God, I pray for those that are watching. I don't know what their circumstance is or where they are at. But may you give them wisdom. May you give them insight in terms of the walls they need to begin to build to protect their lives, to protect the relationship with you, to protect the relationships with others. May we truly live and know this abundant life that Jesus only you can give. For we ask it in your name. Amen. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Now may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. Now may the Lord look to you always, always, and grant you his hope, his peace, and his love. Amen.